So this problem has a lot written down that is interesting and useful perhaps in the long run, but not really needed for the problem. What we really want to do is show that the complex exponential form of the solution is the same as the form of the solution written in terms of a sine with a phase angle. And I'll also point out, I could go either way with the direction of the proof. I could start on the complex exponential sign and go to the sine, or I can do it the other way. And it's a little bit easier to start with the sine function because I have to use the angle addition formula for the sine. Once I'm done with the one for u1, the terms that involve u2 are basically the same. It's just sub substituting variable names. So we'll start out with a1 times the sine function. So I'll use the addition formula and split it up like this. And then I will substitute for sine omega 1t and cosine omega 1t in terms of the complex exponentials. So it looks like this. And the next step, I'll bring out a, a 1 half and I'll collect terms on the complex exponentials. So they, we get two terms like this. And then I'll recognize that, okay, my coefficient of e to the i omega 1t, that is c2. And my coefficient of e to the minus i omega 1t is c1, which is how I've written them down here. Okay, so that's done. So we know what c1 and c2 are in terms of a and the phase angle phi. Or I can invert the whole process and figure out what these are. So to get a1, I multiply the two thing, these two equations. The stuff in the parentheses is that product is just equal to 1. And so I get a1 squared is 4 times c1, c2. And then to get the tangent, what I would do, I'm leaving out a step, I would find sine and cosine in terms of the sum and difference of c1 and c2, divide them out, and find out that the tangent of phi is this ratio of the c coefficients 